Welcome! Do, 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 do. Hello, Week to Warrior. Devin here, doing a video, recording some stuff with this camera. Uh, I'm sick right now, I got pink eye. Can you tell? People ask, I just tell them I smoked half a joint because it's only one eye. But, uh, <clears throat> yeah, sick. Coughing. I'm sick for a while. And despite all the sickness, I want to give you guys a really, really great tutorial right here on exactly what to do if you are a um, business owner, father, you're like in my situation. Like, you got kids, you got a wife, you got some businesses, you got some, your hustles and stuff, you got to work. Maybe you're working a job, you got a side hustle, but you're working, man, providing for your family, working your butt off, both taking care of the kids at home and working your butt off, trying to make money, grow your business, pay the bills and all that, and your health, keep on top of your health, keeping in shape. It's very, very, very challenging to do that because you have small children and the small children, I'll start drawing some stuff up here as it's relevant to, but basically you have small children and the small children, they go around, let's say you send them to daycare, which I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Make sure it's a good daycare at least, like, I don't know, make sure your kids are emotionally stable and then just drop them off at the places or zoos. So I hear, I don't really go in much for that. But basically, uh, your kids will go around, you drop them off, I mean, even my wife and I drop our kids off at the daycare at the gym. So our kids get time at that daycare while we go work out sometimes like an hour and a half. They were crying initially, so I'd like go there and I'd stay with them and like comfort them and now they're like chill, but it's kind of like, I don't know, you gotta be responsive with your kid. If your kid's crying because they have to go be somewhere, then don't send them. Or at least, like, go with them, like, see, like, help support them through that instead of viewing it as a dichotomy of, well, they're either gonna cry there or they cry at home or whatever. Like, it's not really like that. It's more like you can be like, okay, well, they're not doing so well at this place. They're not comfortable here. Maybe that's because they've never been there with me and I, I'm... Oh, we, like every other place she's ever been, I've been in with her, like the daycare area. So it's like I just, I'm chilling there with her for like 20 minutes, and then she's fine, starts playing. And then I just leave, she doesn't even notice, and now she's chill there because she's like, oh, this is an area where daddy goes, so it's safe. And at least that's what I think's we're going on. I don't know, I'll get back to, get to like what you gotta do though. So, got two whiteboards. It's a great setup. Um. Let's talk about what the problem is. I like to try to teach to the problem rather than teaching to tools instead of telling you like, oh, here's everything you can do. Be like, okay, here's the problem. This is what we can do about the problem. So I'll talk about um, basic problem is, I'll just say, don't feel good, no energy. Don't feel good, no energy. And we'll characterize this state by this guy who's all frowning and he's just hunched over right here. He's all hunched over. He's got a cane. He's like knobbled little chicken legs. And I'm going to have him smoking a cigarette. And like that's that's what we want to not be. That's this don't feel good, no energy. And we don't want that. So let's define all the characteristics of don't feel good, no energy. So this guy right here, let me look in here and see if you can. Hmm. I think it's reversing potentially what I'm showing you, but I can just probably fix that in post-edit. We'll see. We'll see. Probably can fix that in post-edit because it's not a live video. <clears throat> anyway, so, don't feel good, no energy. <clears throat> oh, getting a little hunched over myself because I've been sick for the past few weeks. Oh, yeah. Becoming that. Got to constantly struggle not to become that. So this is 
Let's put sick. Um, joints hurt fat no energy. Um, I'll put likes drugs. Not that necessarily I think drugs are always bad. I don't. And there's nuance and we'll get into the nuance. But if you like just only get happiness from drugs or like alcohol or caffeine, like you're just like, I need whatever this is to like feel joy or something or function or like wake up or whatever. There's something wrong. Drugs are I mean, even like medications. Like if you like completely need your anxiety medication, do not have a nervous breakdown at every second of the day. There's an issue. Like I take Adderall, but I could go days and weeks and months without taking Adderall and like it would hurt my, I have done it too. I've like done it to prove to myself that I can do it. And it does, I perform worse. I can organize my thoughts better on Adderall. It's just true. I just can. But I don't need it to not have a nervous effing breakdown. Like it's, I mean, I guess there are situations that I don't know, your life gets bad enough, whatever. I mean, there's like, there's exceptions. I'm not saying, I mean, like, there's, let's say your life is just complete hell. Um, I mean, then objectively speaking, like, you're just, you're sick, sad, depressed, you, like, can't sleep, you're having horrible bowel movements. I mean, like, these are people I talked to when I was health coaching. I interviewed them, and they'd be, like, trying to get into my program, but they didn't have the money to get into the program. And they just were very, I don't know if they would have succeeded, because they're very, very hopeless-sounding people, but... They all want a quick fix is by the fact they were dying, but like, they would be like not sleeping, like having skin issues, candida rashes, pooping horribly, either constipated or pooping blood and weird color stool and diarrhea and the constant nausea and fat gain and joints hurting and arthritis and like, and like, like, like just, just ongoing and like IBS and GERD and like, and like, <laughs> like myelination problems of nerves and just on and on and on. And they like couldn't even find work because they were just so dying. Like just couldn't even work to make money to buy food to feel healthier. And they're just like in absolute hell. So maybe that person, I don't know. I mean, that person's probably just having a nervous breakdown constantly because they're just dying and RIP. I mean, the, but for the grace of God, go I. But anyway, so onward. Um, sick, joints hurt, fat, no energy. Uh, let's put um, brain fog. So this is kind of like the state you can end up being in. And then I'll put another person who's in a chair who's just like watching TV. And... This person is um, potentially, potentially also like like a, a different expression of the same thing. Like if you're spending hours and hours a day doing this, that's also not good. Like that's not good. This isn't good because this will ultimately lead to this when your legs get weak from not walking. And eventually, let's say, like, you'll get injured or something. Because people, you keep getting weaker. Like, basically, a good way to understand this, and now we can, this is awesome, we incorporate both the whiteboards. We can understand, like, overall um, life health. Let's just say for most people. For all life health. So, overall life health <clears throat> is... Basically, and we'll just map out like a brief axis and just put like like 10, 1. Uh, if you hit 1, like or actually this was 0, 1. If you go below 1 though, you die. Oh. So that's where the issue is. And then this is like, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 60, 70, 80, 90, do, 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 do. If you make it past 90, you get an A+. Plus. You get an A. You have to make it past 90. Uh, anyone watching this, you have to make it past um, 95 while still being able to walk to get an A. 
yeah, that's your grade for life. That's just the criteria, um, at least in the uh, in the physical development area. If you can't manage to walk at 95, because like you're not going to be graded on the advanced stuff. They don't actually like do a backflip when they're grading your life. They're just like, well, can you walk? And you're like, well, I forgot how to walk, or I just died because I didn't take care of myself. Like, I don't know. I feel stupid doing that. So, I don't know about you. I'm not gonna tell you how to live your life, but I feel really dumb if at the end of my life, when they're grading my life, I couldn't walk. Not a good look. It's just not a good look. You know, it's embarrassing. People are gonna be like all embarrassed about it. They can even zoom in. Ooh, this is like nifty, nifty, nifty. There we go. You can zoom in a little. Room is actually completely organized. It's a complete disaster, but you can't tell. Or is it? All warfare is based on deception. Not that we're at war. We can be partners. Okay, zero, ten, whatever. So let's say, I'll throw a five in here just because, like, let's be complete. This is fun. I enjoy doing these videos. It's like an act of creativity. It's just something I've realized. You need to be creative. If you're a creative person, you have to express your creativity. Peterson talks about this in Absent Meaning. You need to express your creativity or it causes problems because you just get all pent up and you're like, I need to just express the thoughts I'm having constantly. Creativity can also be understood as a relation to the speed at which you have thoughts. So. I have thoughts really fast. Like I'm just constantly having thoughts. Like I take Adderall even to slow my thoughts down. Like I just have thoughts at such a rapid rate. Like I'll take Adderall and go to sleep because it just calms my brain down. Like I just have, it's awesome. Like if I want to like write or something or do something very creative, I can go off of Adderall and it's just like, it's, it's cool though. So anyway, um, on back to this thing. And I love expressing this because it's also so creative. I get to express something I've like spent my whole life learning. So Let's just also express, here's like three. Let's say three. And three is interesting because once you drop below three, you seldom ever recover. And this is a sad one. So three is where we have people, and I'll like, I just draw seven array stuff, but three is where we have like you, um, you need a walker to get around. Like once you need a walker to get around for the person sad but actually no this person's happy because they're alive because like f it you're alive so you can still do stuff so they're happy because like what the hell i mean don't despair like you're alive like well i would there'd be reason to despair because you're alive just be happy because you're alive you're walking that's great so what this person should do is this person should just like move in the pool as much as possible. Just move in a pool, move in a pool. Strengthen everything without impact. Because once you're at like three, so this is three. If you drop below three, let's say now, oh God, below three. I think you're like legally crippled at this point. This is the person who cannot get around without a wheelchair. And they're still happy because they're still alive. You can still recover. Um, but it's, A, it's not cool unless you're Professor X. Even still, he's still a bummer because like, he falls out of his wheelchair. It's like, the leader of the X-Men, but his weakness is falling. Like, I don't know. Like, just, it's a bummer. I don't know. Like, I don't want to not know how to walk. So this is why I do all this stuff. So, you're in the wheelchair. This is like a two. This is three, two, and then like, one is like you're in a bed. Okay, this is good. I love to find this stuff. This is actually good. One is like you're in a bed and you're still happy because you're alive, but you got to kind of like a little bit of a frantic look about you because stuff's kind of hard to recover at this point. And a zero is, um, don't. And you're like pushing up daisies and stuff. So that's like zero. So we come back from this at the resurrection and this is like really hard, harder. This person should just be in the pool as much as possible and then they're gonna have to work to the point where they can walk and be in the pool and then then they can get to the point where they're at a four, which is a person who can like just like walk. Like he can he can walk and he's got a cool little top hat because he doesn't need assistance walking. So he's at four. He can just, he can walk, and he's having like a good time, and then, um, we'll go through examples of this, this is good, and, 
Uh, yeah, so that's like the four. The four can walk, and then like once you get to like a five, that's like a five is like you can like hike a mountain. Like a five is like you can hike a mountain or something, and like you're you're good. So like a five would be like I'll put like climbing. Actually, that's like a snow cat mountain. Um, I'll put more like. Like, this is kind of like a five. Like, you can, like, go hike, like, go for, like, a walk in the Appalachians, like, get up a mountain. Like, that's pretty good. You know, you have, like, joint mobility in your knees. You could probably, like, help people move. Like, this is, I think, where my dad's at. I think my dad's at, like, a five. Um, my mom's, I think, at, like, a five as well. Um, they have, like, that's, like, the beginnings of athleticism. It's, like, you're, you're not crippled. You have, you have, you're not basically crippled. But you're not basically athletic either, and you want to really try to make it above a five because this is where you start getting really durable. Like a five, but here's the kicker though: a five gets injured. Now a five is a three, and then a five has to rehab themselves, but they're not used to rehabbing themselves because they're not used to working out. They're just kind of like in shape their whole life, but they don't really work out at all. So they get injured. Now they're a three. They don't know how to get to a five again. They don't, like my dad always said, magically develop the skills to exercise in a disciplined way. So if you get injured at a five and you go to a three, you're going to stay at a three and go to a two and one and then zero and die. Because really, like, I mean, if you weren't exercising when you didn't have issues, are you suddenly going to develop the discipline to do that when you have problems? a question. Um, people pay attention to themselves. Even like, let's say my grandmother, who's at a three, like she should be at the gym. What else are you doing? Get to the gym, like get to the gym and just in the pool, in the pool, you'll get to a four and then a five. And then you don't have to die and spend your life. Like my wife's mother, who is um, like, a uh, bed bound. She, like, basically can't walk anymore. And then we saw it coming for years. We told her, like, you're going to not be able to walk. You're not be able to walk. You're losing the ability to walk. You're losing the ability. Oh, now you can't walk. Oh, no. Isn't that, like, fun? You know, you have to, like, be alive as someone who can't walk. It's like you have a ball and chain attached to you all the time, but it's not even a ball and chain. It's just your own stupidity. And it's your own flabby body that's weak and frail that you're stuck with because you didn't just get a gym membership and just drive there for, like, an hour a day and just do this in a pool. It's warm, like it's nice. There's a jacuzzi. I know, like it's hard, okay? I get it, like whatever, but like it's better than like dying. I don't know. I mean, like either lay down and die, <coughs> get busy living or get busy dying. I believe that. Or like at least just make healthier choices and work your way up slowly and understand this scale so that you don't end up just dying stupidly. You're really like, oh, I just wasn't aware that I'm going to get injured eventually because if you're a five at like in your 50s, and then you, let's start drawing on the map, because then we can talk about this trajectory. So I'll just model out uh, my father, who I have the utmost respect for, um, and the only reason I would even model this on the internet is just because I know he watches my videos, I want him to see this, and I want him to understand it because I love him and I want him to um, just understand what, the, what I'm talking about. So he starts off his life at, let's say, I said, actually, I'll make it through the scale first, so we can get to a six. Do a six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So a ten is just obviously you're know, like at the Olympic athlete level. Um, you have like perfect digestion, like you have like completely mastered your health. Like just ten out of ten mastery of your health, great athletic performance, you look shredded. Nine is like um I mean, not all Olympians are healthy, I'm going to throw this out there, but, like, let's just say it's, like, the 10 out of 10. I just want to, like, illustrate this quickly so we can, like, just get through the actual age progressions, because that's why I wanted to make this video. To give people some basic understanding, I think it was even just a subset of the video, because we're talking about how to not be this guy. So, anyway, um, going to number 9, I'd say, like, number 9, like, let's just put that at, like, the, uh, I'll just put, like, 
like the champion athlete. Like that's like number nine. Number six is the person who's like, I'll just put like doing um, push-ups on the ground. Like that's like number six is like doing push-ups. Uh, number it's seven right here I'll put is doing pull-ups. It's like doing pull-ups and it's actually a good understanding. And then number eight is like um ba 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 number eight like I'll put like a stew pot for like cooks all their own meals um stew pot for like cooks all their own meals and then um like uh this is my amazing picture of an arm with muscles. So like eight, you're like getting muscular, you're like, you're getting in shape, like people are like, oh dang man, you look like, you're, you're looking good, your skin looks good, you're clear. Um, I put myself at like a nine, eight, nine-ish. I mean, I'd be a little higher, but I'm just figuring out the kids thing and stress and budget buying food. Figuring out how to eat as healthy as I need to on a budget and it's just, it's hard, it's hard. So I like, said, like, I could put myself at like between an eight and nine in health fitness at the moment. Um, but like I look good, you know, like I look good. Like I get like good athletic results. At eight and nine because like I can't quite like win a tournament yet. Like I need to like do like a two month camp to like win a tournament. And then like a 10 out of 10 would be like, I just like have like optimized my stress, optimize my sleep. I'm like EMF free, bathing in the natural waters of Vermont, meditating my bush with like my healthy relationships and all the like, you know, journal, my trauma, whatever, like 10, like tell us 10 is just like for all definition, like the unreachable perfect state that we can never be in because we're not narcissists who only prioritize ourselves. So I think you're probably going to realistically be like a 9.5. If you're like a 9.5, like, woo, and that's probably where most Olympic athletes are at anyway. Because life is complicated. You're not going to be at like a 10. Like, I mean, eventually, maybe. I don't know. That's the goal. Um, maybe I'll make some private medical uh, clinic offshore and they'll work at just getting people to a 10. But you're probably going to go to a 9.5. And, cause unless, and maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe just staying at a 10 is the way. And you stay at the 10. And then your brain works so well that you can just optimize everything. You're just cr super creative. And you come up with all the business ideas. And everything just flows. And Try that out. I'll try that out. But definitely, so that, that's... The scale, basically. So six, you can do push-ups. Like you can, like bang out like twenty push-ups. Seven, you can like do pull-ups. So you're actually like getting in shape. You can like run. You can do pull-ups. Like you work out. Like you're like in shape. Eat pretty healthy. Like and I say pretty healthy. I mean like gluten sometimes. You're not the strictest, but you eat ninety percent plus healthy and like clean. Like ninety percent plus clean, and then like ten percent. Pretty much clean, but sort of unclean. Ha, <laughs> ritually unclean is funny. Um, so that's basically the scale of life and stuff. So, anywho, I will just describe the basic trajectory. So that's actually a good way of putting it. So let's, let's say the basic trajectory of um, my father, who is a wonderful and brilliant example of a man. So let's say he starts off his life at like a six. And then like... By like high school, he was like up to, he said he could run like a five minute mile. And high school was probably like his athletic peak. <laughs> so he gets up to like eight, nine ish, pretty high. And then just kind of like cruising, cruising down to like 30, probably down to like a seven, like a 6.5. I don't know if you can still do pull ups at that point. So 6.5, 40, 50. And as you can see, basically in like 50 makes it to like about five. And that's the basic trajectory. And it's like, that's, that's good. You know, like that's good. You know, that's a, that's a healthy dude is like preserving himself really well. But here's the thing with like, and he always tells me about trajectory. I love the guy. God bless him so much. He's such a brilliant man. Um, he always tells you about trajectory. So at this point, we're at a five and I'll demarcate that with this line. I'll put this like. I really hope he watches this because I do love him. And I hope, like, 
he can teach me, or I can teach him 1% of what he's taught me. Um, very appreciative of our parents. So anyway, uh, so you can either go and start working out and you maintain this trajectory, 80, 90, and like so on. Like that's a great trajectory. And if he got injured, he would drop down to here maybe, but he would still be on this trajectory. And then what I like about this trajectory is this is the trajectory above five where your penis works and you can still have sex. So, like, like I've had my health go to shit before. Really, no, really. Like, I like when I was 16, like, I was, like, wrestling and stuff. I had insomnia. I was trying to figure out what was causing my insomnia. So I'm trying all this different stuff. And I come across, like, all these studies about how salt is just so bad for us. And I'm just reading all this stuff. I'm like, you know, I should really start getting rid of salt. So I start getting rid of salt and stuff. And in addition to making other dietary changes too, I was doing some sort of cyclic keto at the time, which worked at the beginning, but I didn't know keto tends to not work toward the end for electrolyte dysregulation reasons. And then I'm eliminating salt like a ways through that because insomnia, I'm just trying to figure out doing the keto thing and trying to figure out insomnia too. And it didn't really work. I mean, it worked a little in the beginning, but not really. Um, for reasons I get into in other videos, I can explain more later. But Basically, though, eliminating salt, working out a bunch, but really just the eliminating salt, and then, like, I was also working out too much of the time, which definitely was contributing to, like, adrenal fatigue, and I just, like, ended up having, like, horrible gut, diarrhea, candida rashes all over my thigh and groin, like, ended up pooping blood at the height, and then like, I think it just kind of was, like, I just gave up on... Ever. I can't just like, oh, well, shit, blood. So it's, it's really all downhill from here. I felt like horrible. I wasn't sleeping at the time. I didn't slept for like a month. This is my junior year of high school. It was one of the times I didn't sleep for a month. And I'm just like, I was falling asleep in class. I was just kind of like, you know, like, am I going to die? Do I have cancer? Like, my penis didn't work. I hadn't, like, the other day, my penis hadn't worked in like, I had an erection in like nine months. Um, grows great things for your confidence at the age of 16. I would scream in my car randomly, I'd just like sit and pull over and just scream because I was like, well, I'm dying and I don't know why and I can't figure it out and like everything just is telling me like, keep eliminating salt, salt, hey, whatever, it's a bunch of conflicting stuff, I can get into like all the exact studies I was reading and why I was confused and what, and, but then anyway, the point was I was confused, a lot of stuff was telling me to do a lot of things that weren't working and uh, like avoid, or whatever, just... Anywho, uh, yeah, so not fun, though. Not fun going below the, the five line. Like, that's where your penis doesn't work and, like, things are going wrong. You wonder why you're dying. So, um, weird smells will emanate from your body at times. Um, so, stay above five. And, yeah, so anyway, though, let's say you stay in this trajectory and then he gets injured. Drops, like, a three. And then he keeps in the same trajectory. Now you're, like, dead at, like, seven in your 70s. And it's kind of a bummer because, like, you work your whole life to, like, end up in a wheelchair and then die. That's crappy. You know, to, to get your diaper changed and stuff. Like, right, when you should be, like, enjoying the life you've built for yourself as, like, a successful contributor to the American dream. But anyway, so good example of trajectories and, like, how life trajectories can play out. Um... My father is a very strong man. I believe he can he can take this and take the advice. Hopefully, because like seriously, I mean, it's, it's occupied. I think that was my daughter. So five, five is like below five. Like you have. Crippled problems and could probably qualify as handicapped. Um, and then I put seven as like the demarcation of like athleticism. Like at seven, you become like fit. And basically, wrap up, 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 um, let's map out a lot of entrepreneurs. This is going to be useful. I map out entrepreneurs now and like my own self in some ways. Um, I don't map myself out because it's going to be another video and it's just kind of like take a while. But let's map out like a lot of entrepreneurs. So people start off, they're high energy people. They start off here in life and they're going up, 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 up till 20. They peak out at like, let's say like 9.5. 
kind of on top of everything and they start doing all the entrepreneurship. Well, actually, this kind of goes a little faster. They start doing all the entrepreneurship and they basically like end up dropping a lot of the habits. And basically what happens is like you're up here and then like, hmm, this is actually how I can explain this. This is kind of, so let's say like you're 20, you're at 9.5 and you're going to, let's say just shut yourself in an office and just work all the time. So six months, you're going to be at a seven. So six months, seven. And then another six months, you're going to be at a six. And then you're probably just going to keep going asymptotically toward five. That's kind of like what I think that that trajectory looks like. You kind of then asymptotically approach five. It's because all the habits go wrong and a lot of it's breakdown of various bodily systems like you're able to deal with inflammation for various reasons. Now you're not. You had less stress. Now you have more stress. And your health, which you thought was contingent on um, you, uh, you thought you actually knew what you were doing. You were like, oh, I know what I'm doing. That's why I'm healthy. Um, and my wonderful daughter. I don't want to encourage her, though. But um, you thought that you actually knew what you were doing, but in reality, you just never been stressed. You started at a seven, you went up to here. Actually, after I will talk about my trajectory. So I started at, let's say a five. Like I started at a five, and I went up to like a six, and I stayed like a six, and I tried to make myself up to a seven, but it was a seven with like, the issues of like someone at like a three. So like I couldn't sleep. So I'm basically just like constantly, instead of naturally being here, I'm being like dragged down to here. And I have to constantly try to do stuff correct to like keep myself over here. So it's like I'm like heat up with dash lines. And it's like, because it's like I'm simultaneously going on both. Because like I have. Constant insomnia, like, like earlier on, like digestive problems, just like everything's going wrong constantly. But I'm still young, so I'm not like completely F. But then it's like I'm constantly trying to, and then I can just drop like down here and like, if you've never experienced that, like that's a blessing, but it's like that happens though, because systems break down your body. It doesn't happen linearly. Like this is all linear, which is great, but things don't happen linearly with your body. It's not like you get injured linearly. It's not like, you start losing blood and it's like, it's linear. It's like you're fine until you're not and then you're dead. That's how the body works. It's not like heat tolerance is linear. It's like, oh, 100 degrees, I can tolerate this. So it's not like you can kind of untolerate 110. And then like, like, it's just like 110 to 120, you're just dead. And like, like you know what I mean? Like, like it's just like, it's not linear, it's exponential. So that's the kind of, like, this is deceiving. So all, got me like 10 minutes left. So let's, get to the chase of don't feel good, no energy, what to do. So, um, let's start off by consolidating these problems into, like sickness has to do with the immune system. Joint health has to do with inflammation which has to do with the immune system. Fat has to do with metabolism, which has to do with inflammation, which has to do with the immune system. No energy has to do with metabolism, which has to do with inflammation, which has to do with the immune system. Inflammation has to do with uh, diet, gut which has to do with inflammation, which has to do with the immune system. Metabolism has to do with diet and gut, which has to do with inflammation in the immune system. Uh, liking drugs has to do with um, brain no work, which has to do with inflammation and metabolism, which has to do with the immune system as well. Brain fog has to do with um, often drugs, but inflammation 
and the immune system and dysfunctional metabolism. So really, when we're looking at all these problems, oh wait, you couldn't see. <laughs> Me being all sick. So you couldn't see what I was doing over there, dang it. Uh, but yeah, so it, all, it all basically has to do with the immune system. Um, because the immune system, I mean, the gut has to do with the immune system. So I'll actually do that map out over here so you can see this. So I can zoom out a little. Okay, I don't know where that cut off, but... Uh, sickness also has to do with a dysfunctional circadian rhythm, which has to do with brain fog as well. So let's put um, problems going into the center. So we're up, 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 up. So we have, let's put inflammation. Um, Immune, leaky gut, um, circ, rith, circ, rith, HPA axis, um, leaky gut, and this includes, um, gut, bacteria, both bad and good, inflammation, immune system, circadian rhythm, HPA axis, oh, um, fat, um, brain, fog, brain fog slash problems. This isn't to me all brain problems are exactly due to this, but this makes all brain problems worse. So, these are all related. So, when we have leaky gut, that triggers our immune system, which then triggers inflammation, which then triggers fat, and the inflammation also triggers more leaky gut, and the inflammation triggers more immune system. And the inflammation triggers brain fog. And the leaky gut triggers brain fog. And the immune system triggers brain fog. And all of this dysregulates the circadian rhythm, which then triggers the immune system. Are you following? And this also causes inflammation. And this causes leaky gut, because it dysregulates our gut bacteria. And this causes brain fog. And brain problems mean that this isn't regulated. And brain problems also can cause stress, which can affect our gut. And stress can make us fat. And stress will trigger our immune system. And stress will cause inflammation. And stress, <laughs> and stress will cause brain fog. <laughs> and that's how it works. And then there are things that contribute to each of these things. So now we'll go over to here. And let me check the time to see how much time I've got. Um, now I have five minutes. So I'm going to start quickly. List all of the things that tend to cause all these little problems. So. Um, and there's dysfunctional metabolisms in there too because that causes issues with cells which contributes to fat which contributes to inflammation and they all play in. So the things that contribute to this are in no particular order seed and I'm only put the worst offenders. Like I'm not going to waste your time with dumb stuff. The worst offenders. Seed oils. Pesticides which is on the um Look up dirty dozen and a wheat glyphosate. Dirty dozen wheat glyphosate. Um, ba 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 ba. Like, I guess alcohol is not great. 
Pat Laws were really not good, actually. Um, being sedentary. Being sedentary. High stress. And I'll put chronic. Uh, because periodic, like acute high stress from exercise actually decreases your overall stress response. Um, bad sleep. Um, rup, up, 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 inflammation immune. Um, I'll put food intolerances. Food intolerances, um, and um, let me look. What else? Like the major offenders for this. So like like high stress chronically. So lack of quiet, I guess. Um, poor nutrition. Um, I'll put toxins, heavy metals, because that is definitely, in high of doses, those can cause huge issues. Um, too much omega-6s in your diet. Omega-6, um... Boop, 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 boop. I think that may be high stress, seed oils, pesticides, alcohol. Um, including all the red 40 and everything. I guess like um, drug use, like bad drug use, either drugs slash medications used badly could and will definitely contribute large amounts to this. Uh, lack of salt, which could fall into like any of these. And then, like various illnesses, like if you have autoimmunity, it will contribute to all of these things. Um, but basically, I'll just relate this back to the entrepreneur who's like in really great shape, and they start to develop issues, and they're like, "Oh, why am I developing issues?" So, you're in great shape. You hit twenty. You start. Well, you've been your whole life consuming seed oils, which have been um, causing you problems, but you just had so much resilient health and metabolic health that you've been able to deal with it. So seed oils, pesticides, consuming more alcohol, being more sedentary, higher stress, worse sleep, um, is contributing to immune acting up, which is giving you more food intolerances. Perhaps your nutrition is not as good. You could be exposing yourself to more heavy metals, drugs, um, medications, and um, like, oh, but no, no recovery. No recovery, and then low, no metabolism, because that's a cause, and that's an effect and a risk factor. So you start having these issues, you start gaining fat, fat gain causes, contributes to inflammation, um, contributes to worse sleep, and then you start getting into this cycle, and then you've never, you've been on this slight downward trajectory. The upward trajectory was merely a result of biology and had nothing to do with you. And the downward trajectory is what you've been on, basically what your habits have been fighting for your whole life. So now you're having all these issues and that's just basically like gonna be a heck of a problem to pull yourself out and that's gonna cause joint problems, just gonna cause you to have harder time exercising. So it kind of you just go pound, because like, I'll put like inflammation, dude, just inflammation. Because um, inflammation will contribute on its own. Inflammation, all these things will cause anxiety, which will contribute to chronic high stress. And it's just kind of like, it's like this dysfunctional spiral that you can get pulled into that is really not functional. So you want to do things to make sure that you don't get sucked into that and you pull yourself out of that and um
Yeah, uh, that's it for my rant for today. Um, keep all this in mind and value your health because it's really your greatest asset. If you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And it's a great thing. Now take care of it. And um, subscribe for more health, fitness, high-performance-based content. Done.